Hello, I'm Dr. Günter Dumkova Fuchs, senior partner with the Fox Group. It's July 2010 and the final rules are out. Here are now selected critical details on meaningful use criteria of EHR systems and some observations on certification. The High Tech Act provides up to $17 billion for incentive payments to providers who adopt certified EHR. The definition of certified is also limited. For example, a certified system must include patient demographics and clinical health information, such as medical history and problem lists, must have the ability to provide clinical decision support for physician order entry, must capture and query information relative to healthcare quality. With the exception of e-prescribing, very few systems address these basic criteria, let alone the now more detailed criteria found in the final rule. Just now, July 2010, the final rule on meaningful use criteria were published, at least covering the years 2011 and 12. Criteria are still driven by health outcome policy priorities and care goals. Meaningful use criteria include less emphasis on the traditional functions of systems, such as documentation and claim submission. Instead, or better in addition, many more criteria related to patient access to electronic copies, clinical summaries, lab test results, educational sources, and sharing of patient information with public health authorities. What are health outcomes policy priorities? They include items such as quality, safety, efficiency of healthcare to reduce health disparities, to engage patients and families, to improve care coordination, to improve public health and to ensure adequate privacy and security protection for PHI, protected health information. And what about the care goals? There are 10 care goals. For flavor, here are six examples. Providing access to comprehensive patient health data. Use evidence-based order sets, computerized physician order entry. Systems must reach out to patients, such as reminders, care instructions, for example. Public reporting and timely access to data, knowledge and tools to make informed decisions. Exchange of meaningful clinical information among professionals to ensure privacy and security protection through operating policies, technology and compliance with applicable law to provide transparency of data sharing for patients. The care goals are implemented through a series of objectives and measures. These objectives and measures are scheduled for implementation over a four-year period between 2011 and 2015. The first 25 objectives, or Stage 1, will apply to users claiming meaningful use of certified EHR technology in the year 2011 and 2012. CMS expects to issue additional objectives to apply in 2013 and later. You don't want to participate? Consider the disincentives. 1%, 3% or even 5% decrease of Medicare payments for those Medicare participating providers who do not demonstrate meaningful use at least by 2015. There are 25 objectives for eligible providers in 2011 organized in two groups, 15 so-called core measures and 10 menu objectives, of which at least five must be achieved. Here are a few examples of the core measures. Use CPOE for medication orders. Maintain up-to-date problem list activation, medication and allergy list. Record demographics, vital signs, smoking status. Implement at least one clinical decision rule. Provide patients with electronic copies of the health information, including clinical summaries. Have the capability to exchange key clinical information among providers. Protect electronic health information, EPHI, created or maintained by the system, through appropriate technical capabilities. The list for hospitals, by the way, is the same except for that they must provide patients with an electronic copy of their discharge instructions upon request. Here are some of the 10 menu objectives. Implement drug formula checks. Incorporate lab test data. 
generate lists of patients by specific conditions to use for quality assurance and research, send reminders to patients per patient preference for preventive follow-up care, perform a medication reconciliation for patients sent from another care settings, submit data electronically to immunization registries and public health agencies. And there is something else important about objectives and measures. They have to be able to be expressed in metrics. Metrics? What are we talking about? Measures are metrics relating to the reporting of quality and administrative measures. Example of the stage 1 measures for meaningful use of eligible providers include Use CPOE for medication orders for at least 30% of all such orders. Maintain up-to-date problem list, activation, medication and allergy list on at least 80% of all patients. Record demographics, vital signs, smoking status on at least 50% of all patients. Incorporate at least 40% of all lab test orders whose results are positive or negative on a numerical format data. Many measures have also simple yes and no answers, such as performing drug-drug and drug allergy checks. Are there calculations involved? Well, kind of. It will require the collection of information to use as a denominator in calculating these percentages. However, there are exceptions. Not all providers will be collecting information on measures. For example, specialists may not collect information on preventive care screenings. Some measures do not match the definitions used in PQRI definitions already in use, and some measures may be beyond provider's control. However, the criteria vendors must meet to have their software designated as certified EHR technology includes the requirement for the software to do these types of reports, including the percentages and other calculated measures. This is a great example of how careful one needs to go through the due diligence process to select the right kind of EHR system and vendor and have contractual relationships addressing these kind of issues. So what about the incentive payments and certification? The criteria for certified EHR technology outlining the functionality required have also been issued. A few vendors have already pledged to modify the system to meet the meaningful use criteria, but they now need to decide if they will make modifications to meet the certified EHR technology criteria as well. An interim process for organizations to certify EHR technology as meeting the certification criteria has been announced, and a handful of organizations are applying to become certifying bodies. The government is expected to allow for several certification methods or organizations, including CCHIT. Certified EHR technology products are expected to be available by the end of 2010, just in time to start the 90-day period for attestation of meaningful use in 2011. Eligible providers attaining meaningful use in the first quarter of 2011 can attest to that fact in April 2011 and begin receiving incentive payments in May 2011. If you'd like to learn more about meaningful use criteria, about introducing an EHR system into your practice, or about the Fox Group, give us a call, drop us an email, come visit us on the web, where you'll find several short videos on the subject detailing all the current meaningful use criteria and deadlines. The Fox Group, providing excellence to the healthcare community since 1989.